Cassie, what they do now? Is you or is you ain't? Steve, didn't you hear your mom calling you? 37. You know, Cassie, if I win it once more, it's mine for a life. Yeah, it appears to me like buying an icebox on the installment business. Yeah. And now for the third and last time. Won by William Peck, 1938. Yeah. For the third and last time, will you quit that and go in the house and get your lunch? Oh, what's the hurry, Cassie? The train doesn't leave until... Went on a vacation? You know your ma and pa's leaving themselves today. And if you don't go in the house and get your lunch so they can get away, maybe you ain't going to no camp. And if you don't go to no camp, you know you can't win no cup. You heard your ma giving that warning. Willie! Willie, this is the last time I'm going to call you. Come in now and get your lunch. And call your father. Okay, ma. Dad. Dad. Mr. Peck! Mom wants you to come to lunch. <laughs> Gonna bring it home for keeps this time, son? You said it. That's what you think. Hello there, Herman. Say, Dad. Yeah, son? You're not gonna let your fishing trip keep you from coming up to camp and watch me take Herman, are you? <laughs> Nothing on earth to keep me from that, Bill. Better save yourself the trip, Mr. Peck. How about it, son? You don't have to worry about me beating that ice truck. <laughs> <laughs> Ice truck, huh? <laughs> okay, son, okay. Strap this on the car for me, will you? Sure. Shake a leg now, Bill. Who'd you call an ice truck? You. You did, huh? Sure, you are an ice truck. That's all I wanted to know. Well, you found out, ice truck. You'll find out. I'll tell you what, Herman. Let the race decide. You quit bothering Bill and go do some more practicing on your running. You're going to need it. I don't need no practicing. I'm in the pink. I'm in the black, but it don't do me no good. So go on. Get out of here. Uh, go on out. That's telling them, Cassie. You leave that pole alone and come on and get in the house. Look. Hey. Put that down. Ow! Oh, William Peck. You did that on purpose. I didn't do it, Cassie. Honest, it wasn't my fault. It ain't never your fault. Now you go on and get in the house. Scrum! Scram. Go on and don't be correcting me on my English. Stop dreaming and eat your soup, Willie. I don't like cabbage soup, Ma. No, eat it. It's good for you. Eat your soup, Bill. I can't, Dad. Now, why can't you? There's a frog in it. There's a what? A frog. <laughs> Mom, there's a frog in your soup. Well, there is a frog in it. Oh. <gasps> Get that animal out of here at once. And now, William Peck, you are not going to summer camp. But I, gee, Mom. Remember, Bill, you were warned. But, Dad, I haven't done anything for two weeks. No. I suppose the door on the butcher's icebox just automatically closed. You don't think I... I do think. And those crackers in my bed weren't as funny as you thought they were. But I didn't mean nothing. No? Well, just the same, you're going to stay at home with Cassie. <laughs> Dad, I suppose there's no use in trying... No, Bill, there isn't. You're going to stay at home. Gee, the gang's going to feel awfully funny going up on the train without me. They're going to have a lot of fun at camp, and Herman will win the cup and everything. Bill, it's about time you understood a few things. If you want a thing, you've got to deserve it. And you didn't want that cup bad enough to behave yourself just a few more hours, did you? I hope you and Mom have a good time. Say, Dad, will you do something for me? What? Just a minute. 
And last year, you didn't sleep a wing. Why, you come back here fit to be tied. I'll sleep this year, Kathy. Oh, Mom. What's going on, Bill? I want Dad to leave this at the camp when you go by. Somebody will be winning it, you know. Bill. How would you like to take it up yourself? Me? You won't say anything to your father about this, huh? Arthur, gently. Here's five dollars, because you can take the 620 tomorrow night with the other boys. Gee, Mom, you're regular. Bill! Coming, Ali! <laughs> Wipe that grin off your face. Oh, kiss me goodbye. Hurry up, Henry. Yeah. Uh, Bill, uh, what must you want me to do? Oh, I, uh... I, well, I was going to ask you to leave this at camp when you went by. You feel pretty bad about the camp, don't you? Oh, uh, don't let it worry you, Dad. I guess I had it coming. Your heart was set on winning that cup, wasn't it? Well, what's an old cup anyway? I won it twice. I don't want your mother to know this, but here's five dollars for your fare and spending money. We'll surprise her. But, Mom, I know, I know all about that. Now, don't you worry. I'll handle her. And we'll be up there to see you win your cup. Any time today? Come along, dear. Open the door, Bill. Goodbye, Bill. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye, Mr. Fay. Bye, Kathy. Bye, Mom. Have a nice time. Goodbye, Willie. I'll do what I told you. Yes, Mom. Bye, Dad. Goodbye, son. Land of Goshen. Miss Beck's sleeping pills. Bill, here's your mama's sleeping pills. Go catch her, give them to her strong. I think he's reconciled to the whole thing. Oh, yeah, I think he is. <sighs> See, my your pills. Buy your pills. Oh, thanks, kid. I didn't know the circus was coming. Neither did I. They changed the route a couple of days ago. What a break. We got time to see it before the train leaves for camp tomorrow night. What are you going to use for money? Say, mister, yeah. the man that came through with the last circus gave me some passes for putting up posters. And I did a swell job, too. I bet you did. I know you kids throwing them in alleys and burning them in bacon blots. Not me. My father's an elk. <laughs> All right, then. All right. I guess I could use a little help. <laughs> here I am, raring to go. Okay. Come on over here. <laughs> Grab yourself a handful of these. Here you are. Admit to. Take your best friend with you. I'm your best friend, ain't I, Bill? I'm Bill's best friend. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. I'm Bill's best friend. I'm Bill's best friend. Why? <laughs> Say, mister, make this pass for the whole gang and we can get the posters up in no time. What? Well, as long as the circus is coming tomorrow, the sooner we get them up so people can see them, why... <laughs> That's an idea. How many in the gang? Twelve. Me too. You bet. <laughs> Give me that pass. Now, you hold steady there, you fella. There you are. <laughs> Now, boys, all I need to get hands hold of those, everybody, and put them out in good hey, shape. I want a good job. Hey,
scare me. Hi, you fella. Here, here, here. Get him away from that cage. Oh, I thought he was trained. Oh, that's Demon. He's tough. Is he tough, too? No, that's Poncho. That's my baby. <sighs> that's a swell cat. That's not a cat. That's a lion. Oh, in the circus, we call a lion a cat. Well, what do you call a cat? A lion? No, we call a cat a cat. Why? Because a lion is a cat and a cat is a lion. Why? Well, how do you tell them apart? <laughs> Look, a lion is a cat and a cat is a... Lion is a cat. Why? Get out of here. Go on. Get out of here. Get out of here. Take yourself. Go on. Cat is a lion, and a lion is a Bareback riding marvel. Sensational stellar attraction. She will captivate you with her charm and dazzle you with her daring. Wait a minute. Shut up. That kid's picture smeared all over the place. Where's the picture of me in the lion act? I told you, Moira, I'm not responsible for the advertising. The head office sends it out. Well, my picture would be there if I were the feature act, wouldn't it? Yeah, if you were the feature act, but you're not. Fleurette McCarver. And that mother of hers, she's always managed to get herself into the star spot, and now she's doing the same thing with that kid of hers. Don't carry on this way, sweetheart. Look, when we opened the season, Florette's mother was working in the line act with Bailey, wasn't she? Mm -hmm. And I took her out and gave you her place, didn't I? Yeah, and by the time Bailey and I go on with those cats, the audience had their hats in their hands and are halfway home. I'm getting sick and tired of playing second fiddle to a kid's bareback rider. But, Myrna, I've got headquarters to answer to. I'm only the manager of the show. Yeah, and I'm only the manager's wife, so I have to work in a lion act. Yeah, and I'm not even getting equal billing with the lions. Well, Myrna, what is it you want me to do? I want you to give Bailey and me the star spot. Oh, but, Myrna, I... Oh, come on, honey, you can do that for me. You know you can. Yeah, it's going to twist me around his finger again. Yeah. No, I don't. Why didn't you shave this morning? No, no, come on, please. Come on. No, I right, dear. Tell Bailey we'll try it out this afternoon. You mean the star spot? Yes, dear. You go on. If the audience likes you, if you go over big, I'll get headquarters okay. Oh, you're a darling. Don't you worry, we'll go over. I hope the audience will agree with you. Well, Hank. You yes, Mr. Dell? Looks like we're going to get good show weather, huh? The weather will be the only good thing we'll get out of this bird. Did you see how the town was built? Yeah. It's all right to me. It did? Well, it don't to me. <clears throat> Listen. I want to change the running order of the acts today. Move Martin and Bailey up in the feature spot this afternoon. What? Put the lion act in the star spot? Why? You heard me. Darrell, well, do what I say. No, Mr. Carver. We didn't give no reason at all. But the audience like Florette. Uh, it ain't the kid's fault. There wouldn't be no switch in the act if Myrna wasn't the boss's wife. Mother! Look, Mother. How do you like it, Hank? Real pretty, honey. Mother made I'm going to wear it in the show this afternoon. Oh, Florette. Now, look. Don't be too disappointed, will you? My mother. You promised me I could wear it this afternoon. Oh, it isn't that, honey. Well, they're rearranging the show, and Mrs. Darrell's going on in your spot. Don't worry, honey. She'll never be able to hold it. Hello, dear. Hello, Myrna. Oh, Hank. Yeah? Did uh, Mr. Darrell speak to you? Uh-huh. Look, when I come on this afternoon, I want a maid to take my cake. You keep that spotlight on me all the time. And when I make my entrance, give me some real brass. Give me a couple of cords, good long ones. Then, you see, when I make the... Well, what's the matter with you? <laughs> yes.
You don't care who you hurt on your way up, do you, Myrna? Well, can I help it if your kid's slipping? Why don't you get wise to yourself? Claret was cute last year and got away with it, but she's no baby anymore. This riding around the ring throwing kisses don't make a star act. The public seems to like her. I don't care what you do to me, but why take it out on Claret? We've never done anything to hurt you. No? You've topped me in every show we've ever done. And well, now your kid's doing the same thing. You don't know it, but you're on your way out. And I'm on top for once, and that's just where I'm going to stay. You don't think that lion act of yours is going to keep you there, do you? Just you wait and see. We've got a new routine that is sensational. And when I say sensational, I mean sensational. Show, my friend, the big show, the largest collection of justifying acts ever gathered under one canvas. My friends, we have searched the far corners of your but the eyes see the heart is sure to believe. Here on the right we have Zaco, captured in the Isle of Oak, and brought to this country and sold for the fabulous sum of $150,000. Next. 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 Oh, gee, that ticket seller is slower than a nice truck. Oh, hello, Herman. You paying to get in? Sure. Ain't you? Pass for 12. <laughs> Just a moment, Sonny. Oh, Mr. Darrell! Mr. Darrell! Come on, step aside, Sonny. Come on, come on, step aside. Next. What's up, Bill? Didn't you get the tickets? What's the matter? I don't know. He told me to step aside. What do you want? Look at this pass, Mr. Darrell. Where'd you get it? This kid here. Is this yours? Yes, sir. We got it for putting up posters. Oh. A pass for 12, eh? Yes, sir. Who put that one in front of the two? The poster man. Say, hey, don't you know that changing a pass is forgery? We didn't change it. <laughs> Can you imagine this bunch of kids trying to get in on a pass like this? Say, hey, you should have been satisfied with a pass for two. Hey, mister, we weren't charged for that. We want to see the circus. Boy, I wish that guy was a little smaller. Just a little smaller. How'd you like to ride in on the ice truck? Ah. Uh, That's forgery. Say, mister, that guy had no right to tear up our pass. If we'd have chiseled on the job, that'd be different. All that work for nothing. What a break. We sure got chipped. Who does that guy think he is? Ain't we going to hit him? Don't look like it, Pee-wee. Why? They tore up our passes. Don't hit him, Pee-wee. You kids really put up those posters, didn't you? I'll say we did. Did you fellows change that pass? No! no I'm I'm right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Honest. Honest engine? Honest engine! Stick with the walk. Hey, where are we going? Don't let Andy know me. We don't. Attention! At the top of the tent, high in the air, I give you for your approval the world's greatest comedy aerial arts.
now, ladies and gentlemen, the rep, celebrated child bareback riding star. In the main ring, Florette, the child wonder. Wow. Ain't she a honey? Ain't she a honey? Down in front. Get down, sit down. Hey, Usher. What do you want? See those kids over there? They just sneaked in. Well, they did, huh? Hey, Jim. Come here. Ticket. Tickets, sir. Yeah. The man at the door takes them. Yeah? Well, where's your stubs? Stubs? Uh... Jimmy, what'd you do with the stubs? Huh? Oh, I, I gave them to Pee Wee. Now, uh, wait a minute. This could go on all day. Who's Pee Wee? I am Pee Wee. Well, where's the stubs? What are stubs? Do you boys know that you committed a federal offense? What do you want me to do? Lock them up? Oh, uh, we didn't do nothing. Just sneaked in the circus, that's all. But I ain't snicking. Come on, get out of here. I'll throw you all in the hoop. Oh, now get them all. You either have to pay or get out. Hey, wait a minute. Don't shove me around. I got dough. All right. Let me see. Uh, Twelve of them. That's right. Twelve kids. That'll be nine bucks. Nine bucks? Say, how much are these seats anyway? Seventy-five cents a piece. Seventy-five cents a piece? Don't forget to bring back the stubs. How do you like that? Nine bucks for seats. That was my camp fare. How are you gonna get there, Bill? I burned up. Boy, what I'd give to get even with that guy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the flying Escalante family, the eagles of equilibrium, defying death and the laws of gravity with each and every moment. another one, Pee Wee. Hey, wait a minute. What? Nine bucks for tickets. I don't get it. Sleeping pills. chance to get even.
Train Benoya does. They will. And now, you good citizens of this fair and beautiful city of Bloomfield, before your very eyes, you behold a cage of the most indestructible steel. But have no fear. Keep your seats, no matter what happens. For though you are about to see the most ferocious lions ever taken from the wilds of Africa, you are perfectly safe. Within this massive cage of the strongest steel, you are about to see four of the most ferocious denizens of the jungle. And when I say denizens of the jungle, I mean denizens of the jungle. Only three months removed from stalking their prey in the wilds of Africa, darkest Africa. Working in this death-defying act, I give you the master trainer of all time, Arthur Bailey. Aided and assisted by his beautiful but fearless partner, Miss Darrow. They don't know what will happen. You don't know what will happen. Nobody knows what will happen. But we shall see. circus going. Let's jump to Riverside. Oh boy, right on the way. Well, so long. Bailey, I found this near your cages when we were cleaning up. Heck. It's not enough the act flopped, but Catherine de Carva laughing at me. Everybody was laughing, but it ain't a joke to me when I look at this box office report. We didn't have half a house tonight. Say, 
What's Bailey been feeding those cats? Oh, dope, I guess. But believe you me, the next time they I... They can't keep you down, can they, Myrna? I say they can't. Well, I'm afraid you'll just have to be satisfied with your old spot. And make me the laughing stock of this whole circus. Well, <laughs> Catherine de Carvo just love that. Just wonder how much she had to do with this stunt. Ridiculous. Well, how do you know? I don't know. Well, anyhow, I'm not going to let her get away with it. If that's the way she wants to play, she's found herself a playmate. Oh. Of it, Bill. What kind of a race is it, anyhow? Cross country obstacle. We have them every year. We have to swim across a lake and balance some pie on a plate and cross a mud ditch on a board and race cross country. Sort of a crazy decathlon, eh? Yes. I don't know exactly what they're going to have this year, but I'll make it. Oh, of course you will. But won't they be looking for you up at camp, Bill? Oh, the race doesn't start until 5 o'clock. I can get a hitchhike from here and be up there in plenty of time. Or I could even walk. It's only five miles. If I take the shortcut over the hill. Well, you certainly deserve to win that cup, Bill. We feel like giving him a cup, too, don't we, Mother? Ah, oh, gee. I was only trying to get even. Bailey, how's the lions this morning? How's the sleeping beauties? Hey, listen, the next guy that makes a crack about what happened yesterday, I'm going to punch him right in the nose. You and who else? Well, I didn't sleep a wink last night. But the lions, they slept all right. Just like babies. And you know why? This is why. Eight peck sleeping pills for insomnia. You know what I'm going to do? The first time I get a chance, I'm going down to Bloomfield and look up this Mr. Peck. And I'm going to have a little conversation with this Peck party. And when I do, I'm going to tear his head right off his shoulders. Oh, oh, excuse me. I mustn't get excited. <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How would you like to go up to camp and watch the boys race anyhow? We can drive it in a couple of hours. I love it. Um, Henry, dear. Yeah? I, I've got a grand surprise for you. <laughs> now, don't jump. Bill's going to be at the race. <laughs> How did you know? How do I know? Well, I gave him the $5 for the railroad fare. You? Oh. <laughs> you gave him? Oh. <laughs> Oh, I knew it would please you, dear. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? What's so funny about it? That little... <laughs> I, I gave him five dollars, too. <laughs> you? Henry Peck. No wonder William thinks he can get away with everything. You spoil him. You do. You tell... Uh... <laughs> Come on, let's get started. I'm dying to see him. <laughs> Sorry to see you go, Bill. So am I, Florette, but I've got to get up to camp before my mother and father. They all have a lot of explaining to do. Are they coming up for the race? Sure, they wouldn't miss it. I sure hope I win, because I don't want Herman and his father to have the laugh on us. Who's Herman? Oh, just an ice truck. Ice truck? Well, you see, his father owns an ice company. We used to be kind of friendly, but we ain't anymore. Did you have a fight? No, we bought an electric refrigerator. <laughs> Gee. You're a swell packer, Florette. You would be too, Bill, if you packed every night. 
You see, we're always on the move. Someday, we're going to have a house of our own and live in one place. Lots of swell houses in Bloomfield. Sleep, then they wake up, then they go to sleep again. I'll give my shirt to find that peck. There's a cat who never goes to sleep. Demon. We'll work him in the act. All right. What? Demon? Yes, of course. Come on, I'll show you what I mean. Put the arena up and I'll show you what I mean. Come on. I'll be seeing you again sometime, huh? In Bloomfield? Maybe. Well? Well? Well, why don't you let Hank grab you up over the wagon trail? Then you won't have to walk. Oh, it's too narrow. An automobile couldn't get through. I can hoof it up there in an hour. Yes, but you'll be all tied all right. up. Better watch out. Miss Darrow is trying to top you again. How? I don't know, but they just put up the arena again. Don't go on that, Miss Darrow. Cut out the ifs and buts. That's the act. You and Demon. Me and who? Him? Wasn't it sensational the first time they shot a man out of a cannon? Yeah, but he didn't come out with no demon. But that's not the point. It was new. It was different. And the public's seen a lot of well-trained lines in a cage. That's old stuff. Jumping through hoops and standing around on pedestals. But demon's different. He's a killer. He's the fastest lad in captivity. Over your head, through your legs. Keeping you on your toes every second of the time. The public's never seen that before. That's different. Yeah. And the public ain't never seen a lion eat a man before. That's different. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm here. Now look, you're in the center of the arena, and then they let Demon in. Well, who comes out? Well, there's nothing to it. He starts plunging around the wait cage. Wait a minute, where'd you say I was? What, in there. Use your imagination. <laughs> That's just what I'm doing. Well, you act like you're afraid of Demon. Well, he ain't afraid of me. Well, come on, what are you, a man or a mouse? Mouse. What? I'm a man, and I want to keep on being a man, all in one piece. Come here. Now, pick that up. You're working in the middle. Demon is dashing in and out. He charges at you. What's the other thing he's afraid of? A gun. All right. I come in with a gun. He's got you in a corner. I go boom, boom, boom. He backs right up into his cage, and the customers think you've been rescued from the jaws of death. The customer's always right. All right, turn demon loose. Wait a minute, Myrna. No, no. Watch yourself. You're doing great. Now, well, that's what you think. Up to. 
She's been trying to make her act better than mine. And if the audience likes her, then Mr. Dale can get rid of me. Gee, that's too bad for her. Can't you do anything about it? I'll say I can. I've been telling Mother I ought to put on my new act. I've been rehearsing it. Well, why don't you? I will. That's the old fight. What are you going to do? It's a somersault from one horse to another. I've been rehearsing it for a month. You see, there's no girl in the show business that's ever done this. And if I can do it, we won't have to worry about Mrs. Darrell again. Ouch, Hank! <laughs> Step out of the way, Bill. Good girl. There it is, Hank. Let's do it without the mechanic. Strike it. Oh, but darling, without the belt, you better not. Don't worry, Mother. I know I can do it. She's got it down pretty good, Mrs. DeGover. Good luck. I don't care what this kid says. Myrna wouldn't do a thing like that. What are you doing hanging around here anyhow? He's a friend of mine. I'm giving him a ride. I'll give him a ride on the end of that. Myrna, what about all this? What about all what? This kid says you sicked your dog on Ferret's horse. Sicked him? I did no such thing. Yes, you did, Mrs. Darrow. I heard you say sick him, Mac. You're a liar. Well, the leash just slipped out of my hand. What do you mean, lying about my wife? I saw it, I tell you. I saw it. He's not lying. And you know it. Keep your nose out of this. Who asked her to try this trick in the first place? Taking a spell and gumming up my whole show. I've had enough of these scraps between you and Myrna. I've got a show to run. You're through. You're fired. You can't do that. We've got a contract. Well, read your contract. Unless you play this afternoon, it's canceled. And the said Calvin de Cava shall provide the services of a child bareback rider for 14 performances per week. Failure to appear at any performance permits cancellation at the option of the employer. He's right. Gee, maybe I should have kept my mouth shut. Oh, no, Bill, you did right. Hmm, wait a minute. You don't say anything about Florette. All you have to do is to furnish a child bareback rider, any child bareback rider, to appear. I'm sure I'll be all right by tonight, Mother. Gee, I wish I could ride. You can. Me? Sure, on a wire. With a wire? Oh, you mean with a mechanic. Sure, we can get away with it. All the contract says is to make an appearance. Will you do it, kid? You can't, Bill. You've got to be up at camp for the race. Bill's got to be at Hilldale by 5 o'clock or he'll lose the cup forever. If it'll help you any, Mrs. DeCava, I'll do it. Look, Papa, you can see the whole course from here, just like it was last year. Yeah, and I suppose you're going to get trimmed like you was last year. You know, I'm getting sick and tired of those pecs laughing at us like a horse. You mean horse laugh, Papa. I know what I mean. Well, I'm going to win sure this year, whether Bill Peck gets here or not. Well, you're going to get your chance. Comes now the pecs. Yeah, but Bill isn't with them. What did I tell you? Hiya, Peck. 
How are you, Bob? How's the ice business? <laughs> I see you still have your ice truck with you. Yes, I... No, that's Herman. <laughs> well, it's very nice of you to come up here to watch Herman win the race. Herman? <laughs> Why, he's got as much chance of trimming Bill as... as, as you've ever had with me at golf. Well, no wonder. Look, matched irons and special woods. Oh, shucks. I could give you my clubs and use a set of croquet mallets and still beat you. Well, I give you a chance. I don't get you. Are you so sure your kid is going to win? I bet you $200 against these here clubs here. Oh, now, wait a minute. Those are my best clubs. Go on, Henry. Betty. Oh, but mother. Go on, Betty and Bill can beat Herman. Well, what's the matter? Your feet is getting chilly? Say, I'll bet you my clubs, my house, my car. Never mind all that. We just bet the clubs. I get the rest later. It's a deal. <laughs> right. Come on, mother. Let's find Bill. <laughs> Bill ain't here yet. Bill isn't here yet. What you trying to do, kid me? Oh. <laughs> Don't forget to bet. Remember, no ranching. <laughs> Herman, I got an awful lot of confidence in you. Any of you boys see Bill before he left for camp? Did you see him, Herman? No, I didn't, Mr. Peck. You did, too. He was at the circus. What circus? Well, I didn't want to be a tattletale. Because maybe he didn't want you to know that he sneaked in. But they caught us and Bill paid for our tickets. Oh, something's happened to him. I know it. Maybe he's still with the circus. Where is the circus? It's playing down by Riverside. That's about 25 miles from here. You can go by way of Knoxville. Come along, Mother. We'll find out. had her way, she'd have had Florette pushed right out of this show. Yeah, and I'd have helped her. Am I dumb? You know, I like Florette. She's a swell little kid. Then I like everybody. Yeah, everybody except that guy named Peck. I sure hope I can get away with this, Hank. Hey, Murphy, when did you get to town? A few minutes ago. Headquarters thought I ought to let the show over. Yeah, well, uh, glad to see you. Yeah, I thought you would be. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Florette, celebrated child bareback riding star, sensational stellar attraction. She will captivate you with her charm. Remember, do what I told you. This is awful. I'll stop it. Wait a minute. They're laughing. a couple of things to talk over. Why? Because they're getting me. How? Look! Sure! 
drop him. Why? You're taking Bill to camp. Oh. In that chariot. Get going. Run. Why? Don't argue. Run. 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 <laughs> I've done everything in my power to do my bit and keep the show going. I mean, Florette's a nice kid. I really feel sorry for her. But Mrs. DeCarver, believe me when I tell you, there is a real troublemaker. And you know in this circus there's no room for a troublemaker. I quite agree with you, Mrs. Dell. You're through. You're fired. Goodbye, Bill. Where am I going? You're going with me. Come on. last year? Well, the routine is the same. You will race once around the campground and then down to Tompkins Corner. Now, you swim across Tompkins Lake, balance in the pie plates, <laughs> but don't let the pie fall off. Now, if it does, return and get another piece. After you have reached the other side of the lake, then you will eat the pie without the assistance of your hands. Then through Wilson's Woods, and cross the mud ravine. Then race directly here. Get down to the mud hole. Bill Peck ain't here. Get down to the mud hole. And climb this greased flagpole. <laughs> you boys have certainly got your work cut out for you. Now, do you thoroughly understand the provisions of this race? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the first one who gets the flag from the top of the pole wins the cup. All right, line up, boys. On your marks. Get set. Whoop! Wait a minute. Back to places, boys. Look out, Mr. Bailey. You might go over the side. You don't want to live forever, do you? On your marks. Get set. Whoa! Mr. 
Marks. Get set. Hey, wait for me, wait for me. <laughs> Looks like a ballet dancer. What you doing in that outfit? Hey, come on, come on. Quiet now, boy. On your mark. Get set. Bye, ice truck. No cheating, Herman. Finish the pie. Little ride for us, Horace. You run a nice race, kid. If it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't have gotten here. Uh, you was up there pulling on one rope. One. W O N one. Bill had one rope. Just like this. I show you. You see? 
All you gotta do is use your brain. I get it, Papa. One rope. We hope to see you again, Mr. Bailey. You must come and visit us sometime in Bloomfield. Bloomfield? Hey, I've got some unfinished business there. You know, I haven't slept a wink since I left that burg. I know just how you feel. Henry, dear, did you have that prescription filled this morning? Oh, yes, dear, yes. Uh. Here. Bill. Tell you later. Say goodbye to him. Sorry. Don't right. forget to look us up, Mr. Bailey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think I got the last name. Peck. And Paul. Peck and Paul. Peck and Paul. <laughs> Well, goodbye, Mr. Peckinpah. Goodbye, Mrs. Peckinpah. I'll be down that way. Whoa. Quickly have stepped on your watch. Have a fall? I just had one, thanks. Peck. Hey. Where do you live? Bloomfield, why? That's why! One by William Peck, 1938. Willie! Willie! Lunch is ready! 